good morning. Welcome good morning. to our Wednesday morning class. And uh, for you that are joining us online, we want to welcome you today and how brave you are to uh, tap into this class. <laughs> this is uh, looking at a different way, a different story about really who we are and what our origin is. And I'm trying to make it clear that this is not in any way, any of this is being taught as an absolute whatsoever. But we feel the freedom here at Heartlight to explore and research and to see what parts of the story and the different stories uh, about our origin on this planet and what of those resonate. Because deep down we have all the intelligence of the universe in us, right? And I base it upon this idea of the Holy Spirit that said will teach you all truth. So that means if I have what's called the Holy Spirit, higher self, divine self in me, and it can teach all truth, then it must have all truth. And if it has all truth and it's in me, then I have all truth. Now that's amazing, but that's your power. Your power is the fact that all of the truth of the universe has been put in you. It's kind of what we call, we're the microcosm of the macrocosm, you know. Because the macrocosm is so huge to comprehend today with all this idea of universes and multiverses and, and all of these billions of stars and billions of galaxies. Uh, that's wonderful that Creator has rewritten that in us so that we can have access on whatever level in which we are in our evolutionary process. So we're going to be talking about a particular story. This is not a story that I've just picked, uh, picked up recently. It has been seeding itself, I like to say, in me for a long time. And I talked about that last week of how that I was directed several decades ago to take the uh, text, the Bible text, and look up the original Hebrew words that were translated into the English language and to look those up. And what was interesting about going from English to the Hebrew, and when you go into these other languages, sometimes they have several words that mean that. It's not just one word, but there'd be a whole list of words that are that same word. Uh, that one word in Hebrew has many in English to mean that. So uh, that shows you that when you get out of English, German, and these left brain technological languages, computer languages, and get into the ancient languages of Aramaic and Sanskrit uh, and uh, true Hebrew and all of that, you're getting into a more metaphysical or mystic language that holds many levels in them. Remember me teaching you about the word uh, uh, prayer teach us to pray, which meant two things, set a trap and go hunting or trap the thoughts of God. It can mean either one of those. It's how you use it. If somebody said to me, let's go slotha, which is the word, and tell me let's go out and hunt and catch a trap and see what we can catch, but it's be the very same word to say, meditate, be quiet, steal the mind, and see if you can trap the thoughts and the voice of God into your consciousness that all at the same time. So that's why uh, learning more of the cultures of, of the Middle East gives us a much better range of understanding uh, the context in which these people taught and what they represented. So as I did that, I began to see that things are not as they appear. They just are not the way they appear. But they have been translated uh, and retranslated, and some things have not even been translated, but they've been transliterated. Anybody tell me the difference in translate and transliterate? Trans, one of them is where you take a word and what it sounds like becomes its meaning as opposed to the actual meaning. Very good. And that's the transliterate. That's very good. To translate is to take a word in one language and find an equal word in the other language. 
To transliterate, you take the word in the first language and you make up a sound-like word that is in that language. A great example is Adam in the Bible. Adam. Adam is a transliterated word because it sounds like Adam in the Hebrew, and they made Adam, which means the blood, the blood line of God in the earth. Did you get that? When God became a bloodline in the earth, it was Adam. And of course, that, that, that fell in frequency. And then because the blood of Adam was light. Don't you get that? It's light. But when, it, when the fall of frequency happened, the light became blood as we know it in our veins, which is called congel light. Everybody get that? At one time, the blood that runs into your vein at a higher frequency is pure light. When it fell, it became congelled into this red, goopy stuff that runs in our veins called blood. And that's why it says that life is in the blood and the life is the light of men. Isn't that great? Yeah. Life is in the blood and that life is the light of men. So when you get a true fifth dimension body, you will not have this old red blood running in your vein. It'll return back to a frequency. It'll be turned into pure light. What's our example? Yeshua, Jesus. When on the Mount of Transfiguration, it said, and the light shone out from him. At that moment, he became a higher fifth dimensional Christ being and his light outshone his body and he was wearing the inner self as an outer garment. Wow. Uh, okay, I don't mean to get into that. That's not where I'm going. Uh, so anyway, uh, we've talked about how that I discovered the, the word uh, in the beginning should be an A beginning. See, this is correction. The Holy Spirit's here to correct. The Course of Miracles was a great tool of correction. I don't know that it corrected enough for me, but it was a good step to correct some of the old ways in which the Bible has been used for doctrinal interpretation to bring it back more into a spiritual metaphysical understanding. It was a shift in my perception. Example, vengeance is mine, saith God. Makes you think God is vengeful, right? No. We are vindictive to each other. Give me vengeance and I'll absorb it into the light of myself. That's much better to me than give me an image of a vengeful God. We're the vengeful people. And he said, give it over to me. I'll take care of it. Don't hold on to it. And I'm the light. Then we learned that uh, God is not a original word in any of the major transcripts. It is Elohim. And we learned that Elohim is a plural singular word, which means it is a group. It is a group. If you look it up, it will say gods, little g-o-d-s, gods. If you look up what gods means, it means uh, those who are the administration, <laughs> those who are my representatives. And it actually means judges, those who will judge. And that doesn't mean the kind of judgment that religion has taught you, but it means those who will set order, those who will set law. And either they will set human law or divine law. So we are God's representatives slowed down. Huh? Slowed down to a planetary existence. Do you get that? When you say, I am God, you're saying, I am God in a representative assigned to earth. Hmm? But we know that God is all, all, always much more. We know that he is in the solar, the galactic, the universal. We learned in uh, Genesis 6 
that that God um, some interesting things here. It came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and the daughters were born unto them that the sons of God, now this is an interesting term, the sons of God, you got to understand this sons of God thing. The sons of God is still the group of Elohim that came to represent that which true creator was. Okay? But it's in that group of sons of God or expressions of God. Son means, uh, even I think Fillmore teaches this, that when it talks about the son of God, it's talking about God and expression. The son is the expression of God, expressed. Okay, so in this, this, these Elohims, they came with a good mission. But for them to be successful in their mission, it had to, Earth had to be declared a free will planet. Creator has always wanted a representation of itself that was not programmed. Like a bunch of robots who was doing things because they were wired to do it. They who wanted the experience of people using free will and choice. And that would become the feed to the Creator. And I won't get on that, but I've talked to you about that, how that you all love for somebody to show you love out of free will and not because they have to. When people have to do it, it just doesn't carry the same thing as when somebody by free will spont is spontaneous to show you love and, and, and whatever. That's a whole different experience than, oh, you just had to do that because you didn't want me to nag at you. Because of the free will, these expressions of God, this is all about God because it's all, everything's about God. Now I'm going to use the word God. You know what I'm talking about. Creator, spirit, whatever you want to call it. I, uh, but everything is about that because that's the only thing that is. Either we believe that or not. Either we believe that this thing is omnipresent, meaning what? It's everywhere. It's everywhere. Omnipresent means it's, a, it's omnipotent. What does that mean? All power. So how can there be another power if God's all power? How can there be evil if God is all good? But in a free will setting, man can use its power differently then it is divinely designed by divine law. It can begin to produce its own perception. And this is the birth of what we call the ego system. The ego system is, remember what? I'm not you and you're not me. So there was a split in the Elohim that all started out good. God has made it to the earth, touch down. The Bible says that God wants to fill the earth as the waters cover the sea. But a, a different choice was made <coughs> among the Elohims. A part of the Elohims, and, and we can, you can get into the depths of the story. I will mention some of them in just a minute. But if you get into this, there's, uh, there's names for these two Elohims that separated. There's Inki, and what's the other one? I can't think of it. There's two, and, and they became against each other. Even though they were, they were brothers, they became against each other. 
And they, had a, a, they developed a different agenda for earth. Now at the time that they came, you have to understand there was already a race here on the planet. Earth seed was here. The sons of God of the Elohims are star seed or other star systems or other planets or other dimensions. Came down out of the sky And that's why we keep thinking of God up there and everything up there, because there's something in this that well, it all came from up there. God came up there, everything's up there, heaven's up there, whatever. It just merely means it came from above, these, these words. So there was already a race living on the earth. These are people who have, have shown up on the earth due to evolution. They are part of the evolutionary process of coming from lower forms, viruses, amoebas, one cell beings that became multi-celled beings. But this is where the story of evolution can fit in. And it doesn't mean you've got to join Darwinism and become an evolutionist, but it's a part of the story. And you have to understand the story of evolution and creation to understand the true story. It's not one or the other. So there was a race of people. You can call it the Adamic race if you, if you want to. That was on the planet. And they're, they're trying to evolve up. But these beings that came down out of the sky were of thousands of years higher technology than these that were growing up in evolution. Where do you think all this, all this uh, emergence of new technology has come from in the last, what, 100 years or 20 years or 10 weeks. I mean, it is going so fast. Why? Because we know, we know. And if you watch the right things, you will see that there's aspects of the government and those who are running this planet that know of the sharing of technology from other terrestrial beings on this planet. This is not part of our evolution. It is a part of our involution process. Now everything I'm telling you could happen to us. We could be them. We could be them that goes to, in fact, I watched a documentary recently where some people decided to go help some people on an island that was primitive. Never, they've never seen modern, uh, the modern world of civilization at all, never. And here comes this big plane coming down out of the sky and lands in them. And people they've never seen with gadgets, they've never seen, they thought the gods had landed. That's what they said, the gods have landed. Landed. They called them gods and they bowed down to worship them and they built them homes. They hardly had a, a, a hut to live in, but they built this fabulous homes for the gods. They started bringing food to the gods. When the Spanish came to Mexico, they thought they were gods. It's, it's very much in history yeah. that people yeah. thought they were gods. So this is not a new pattern. Uh, it's a pattern that basically happened. So, I, for whatever, I, for information, I'm going to call them the light Elohim versus the darker. And when I say darker, I mean those who are no longer in the lightment of the divine plan for the planet. They have got their own plan. And what they want to be is they don't want to represent the creator. They want to be the creator and be worshipped. That's their plan. Their plan is to usurp completely that they're only representatives and sons are expressions of God, but they wanted to be the God of the earth. 
And pretty soon I'll try to show you that even there was a great leader of those who become the God of the Old Testament. And what did Jesus say to them who worshiped the Old Testament? I gave it to you last week. It's John 4 and 22. You know not what you worship. Who did they worship? Old Testament, Yahweh God. And to be clear, he said, you worship the devil. Now you have to break down the word devil there, but it is the adversary. Then what did he say? My father seeks you to worship in spirit and truth. Do you get that? When that came to me, it was just like the scales dropped off of my eyes that Jesus was not endorsing the God of the Old Testament, which Judeo-Christianity has made Yahweh the father of Jesus. When it's very clear that it's El Elyon, the Most High, that overshadowed Mary and brought forth Jesus in the Christian story. But you're of your father, but my father. So Jesus is the return of the light Elohim onto the planet 2,000 years ago that said, I want to correct what has been going on here for thousands of years, and I am here to show you the way. Oh, I love it. They had lost their way. They were no longer attached to the true, the true God, the true Father. They had put all their power into this other being that I'm sorry, if you read this Old Testament, it's just totally neurotic. The craziest stuff in here you've ever heard. They're begging God to not put the children in the fire. I could give you scripture after scripture. You would not believe the stuff that this God is doing. And it's supposedly, thou shalt not kill. That only meant to the uh, Israel tribes, but to everybody else, kill them. They were slain by the thousands in the name of this God. I hope you get that because that's one of the most important revelations I have ever, ever received. So the aspect of these sons of God, the, the darker, who banished the, the light ones who did not follow them off of the planet. This is what I was told. They were banished into a home star constellation. I know mine, you have to figure out yours, and I have a feeling we pretty much all came from the same one, but Pallades is what was given to me that I connected with is Pallades. And remember, Pallades is going to be the helper of the, uh, going to be the caregivers of 5D. Yes? I think different places. I, I don't think it's one place. I, I think that too. Ab absolutely. It could be the moon. It could be Orion is a good one because both of these are mentioned in the Bible as well as the moon. So look at, look at whatever planets show up in Scripture most likely are the more dominant homes for the light Elohims. Now, Pallades is where exactly? Gee. It's up in the sky. It's in the sky somewhere. <laughs> you can see it. Put it online. Yeah. If you're an astronomer and you've got the right telescope, you can see Pallades. Okay. Or you can even probably see it if you know where to look. But it is a constellation of stars out there that is called the Pallades. Most, most of what is going on right now that's in channeling, uh, when you find somebody channeling and they're not channeling some ancient entity, but they're just channeling, usually it's the Pallades. And I love that because the, the Pallades have no ego. But when people start going into an accent <laughs> and they give themselves a name, I don't mean to say this badly, but you know, uh, Abraham has some good stuff out there. 
but I'm just reluctant of the fact that it's become a personality or an entity that follow, people are following Abraham. I, my channeling has always been from my higher self. I don't need another entity to possess me to speak through me. That's me. I'm just saying that's me. I don't want it. I'm not opening myself for some ancient entity to come in and speak and some, uh, change my, my accent or my dialect. And, and God bless those that are doing that and doing wonderful things. That's them. It's just not me. I want to do it without ego, without label, without personality. Uh, I hope you understand that. So, the parts of the sons of God that ended up on the planet begin to take over the planet and begin to devise a plan that was different than the Creator's plan for earth. And you're living that now. You're living where their plan has taken us. All based on I'm not you, you're not me. They've used race. They've used gender. They've used different belief systems. Anything that can prove I'm not you and you're not me, they have used that system or created that system to separate us. So, the ones who remained who are more without the light of the plan saw the daughters of men. Okay, I told you. People already here on earth evolving, so there was men and women on the earth, earth seed, and they looked and found that the daughters of men were fair. And they took them. as wives and mixed their seed with earth seed. Most everybody on this planet is a hybrid being. When this happened, get this, this, this is supposedly what God said. My spirit shall not always strive with man for he is is. Uh, he also is flesh, yet his days shall be 120. At that point, when they went into the daughters of men, they produced giants in the earth. Giants in the earth. So the mixed race are the giants, which is translated the Nephilim. N-E-F-I-L-M, Nephilim. The Nephilim race. Now, what this is going to do and upset Christians is because, and maybe some of you have held on to the old Christian idea, that God creates everything in the physical world. That is not true. God is spirit, and that which is of spirit is spirit, and that which is spirit is in the perfect image and likeness of that which created as a spirit being. That is where your reality lies. And for us to believe in a loving, perfect being that we've been called God creator would create anything lesser like this makes absolutely no sense to me. And yet I hear all the time people blaming God, blaming God. How could God do this? How could God let a child be born and it be handicapped? How can, some, uh, how can a child be shot and die like this? The course is very clear to tell you that God knows very little what's going on here. It says all God knows is his son is not happy. And I know we wanted to pull God down into our image and into our likeness. Misery loves company. We want God to waller into it. But God said all I'm going to give you of myself is my voice. And that's called the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the only thing of God that's in the illusion or in the so-called dream. And it is there to waken us up. What are we waking up to? We've been through this. The truth. People say, awaken to what? Awaken to the truth. And please tell me what the truth is. You should know it just like that. 
I am the truth. How long do I have to keep doing this if you don't get it? The truth is your identity. It's not your philosophy. It's not your belief system. It's not how you think. It is who you are. Jesus did not say, I have the truth. I am the truth. Everybody say it. I am the truth. Say it again. I am the truth. Say it again. I am the truth. So the next time I ask you what the truth is, you're going to say, I am the truth. Thank you. It's only taken three years. Yeah, you're wearing me out. Now, seeking what is true is relative, right? It's relative because it's according what your, what your source or base of something is that it is true. If uh, somebody, for instance, would say, um, let's say somebody started a, a rumor, misinformation here, okay? And then it's told to several people and whatever, uh, and, and finally you, you, you're somebody that knows that is not true. And you say, but it is true. How do you know that's true? Because Jim told me. How did Jim know that was true? Because Sally told me. How do you know that's true? Well, well, that's what Virginia told me. So each one has a source of somebody telling them well, that is true based on what somebody else said. People believe that what's true is what they read in the Bible all the time. What's true? But that doesn't mean it's the truth. But it could be true. When you reference the dark entities, um, there are groups that still use those scriptures to, to justify racism. That was one of the, those are the things that they point back to um, in reference to Absolutely. people of darker skin or who they reference or use those scriptures to justify racism. Thank you. And that is very, very true. And also the Jewish people, the, the, the persecution of Jewish people comes from, believe it or not, a teaching that when, uh, when Satan was Cain and Cain brought forth a seed and uh, was the, the seed of the Jewish people. So to get rid of the devil is in the Jewish people. So get rid of the Jewish people, get rid of the devil. And this is what Hitler thought he was doing. He thought it was on a mission to get rid of the seed of the devil was in the Jewish people. And then the darker people, of course, represented the darker aspect of things whatsoever. So this is kind of deeply where some of the seed, I mean, when you think of white people, that's closer to light, white light. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's funny. I know we don't think this is in our conscious, but it is in, it's in our collective unconscious mind, all of these ideas like that. Anyway, thank you. That's good to bring that up in that way. How much long do I have? I wanted to start. I think I'm just going to start the only way and kind of just put this story out and let you see how we feel about it, and we'll kind of bear with it. It starts out that there was more than deities. Some theorists claim that the Anunnaki, the Anunnaki are the ones that came down out of heaven. They're, they're the sons of God. They come from, from above. Were aliens from outer place. Even more shocking, they used Sumerian texts to back it up. So the thing is, you've got to study things before the Bible because the Bible is a bunch of borrowed information that's been watered down and changed in translation. But this is not original stories. These are stories that was going on. Uh, let's see, some of them uh, four to 5,000 years before the book of Genesis even started. And of course, you know, Genesis supposedly is between the two rivers, the Tigris River and the Euphrates River, which is exactly where Iraq is. So you have to start looking at the Babylonians. You have to start looking at the Akkadians. And, and there you find the Sumer people. And they left tablets of information 
that we could show you. Tim's not here. I don't know if you know how to do it. But there's one I'd like to show you. Uh, I've, got, I've got it here. But there's all kinds of these pictures. Oh my God, it's amazing. Uh, there, there's a picture of the Anaki and, and all these things. And you'll see wheels and you'll see helmets and you'll see uh, watches on their arm and you'll see all these uh, different, different things. There's one that shows them in a laboratory holding a human up and saying this is good. And this is when they came and took the race that was evolving here because they wanted a slave race. Now, really what they were looking, why the earth was so in interesting to them is because on their planet, they were dying because of the lack of the, the rays of the sun, how it angled was destroying them. But they had knew the technology that if you use gold in it, that it will not do it. And this is why there's gold in the windows of the astronauts that goes out of space for the same reason of keeping them out of the danger of the certain rays of the sun. Interesting. Do you have another slide there? Okay. Anyway, there's, there's all kinds of them. Yeah. Look at these characters. These are not just made up characters. These are characters that was seen and, and, and made thousands of years ago in, in, in clay and in caves and, and whatever. They're not human as we know human at all. I even think that a lot of these patriarchs of the Old Testament were, were alien beings. Oh boy, somebody hears me, they're, they're going to be marching out here in front of our church, aren't they? Where are you going? Jesus very much could be, absolutely. That's why he's a virgin, not uh, produced by human me, a man. Anyway, much, much about what we know about the Sumerian civilization comes from uh, clues that they left behind in thousands of clay tablets. To this day, the tablets are still being researched, but one author claimed that some of the texts hold an incredible revelation. The Anunnaki are actually aliens. In 1976, a scholar named Zachariah Sechen wrote a book called The Twelfth Planet, which shared translations of 14 tablets related to uh, Enid, a child of the Sumerian uh, Supreme and Anne. His book claimed that the Sumerians believed that the Anunnaki came from a far planet called Nibiru. N-I-B-I-R-U. According to Stitch, Nibiru was an uh, elonged orbit of 360,000 miles at one point and the planet passed close, class to the, uh, passed close to the Earth at the time of the arrival of the Anunnaki. And by the time the Sumerians emerged as a civilization, the Anaki had given people the ability to write, solve math problems, plan cities, and led to the future developments of life as we know it. So all the technology that's going on now was seeded thousands of years ago at the, uh, at the arrival of the Anaki around Iraq and that part of the world. Which hold, when, when, when we invaded Iraq, you would not believe how the governments went in and took statues and pictures that would have proved this theory and philosophy. They weren't going in there in oil. They were going there because there was hidden Babylonian, called the Babylonian Gardens, and hid all this information about our origin as human beings. They seem like truly out of the world claim but who spent decades studying ancient Hebrew, Akkadian, uh, and Sumerian until his death in 2010. Uh, so Stetchen is kind of the one that is the big, big expert on all this, spent much, much of his time. As it turned out, the 12th planet and Stetchen's other books on the topic 
sold millions of copy around the world. I don't know if you all realize how large of a movement is out there with this information. It's huge. Millions and millions of people. You know, I'm really concerned that we live in such a narrow perception of the world. And, and you really have to, to branch out uh, to understand all, all of that. So there is some wonderful, wonderful documentaries. If you just put in Anaki or uh, any of those things, you can really, because uh, I'm not going to stay on this for a long time. I'm just seeding this with you. If there's an interest, go for it. If you're happy in uh, believing that there's a God there and all you have to do is pray and it's done, go for it and it's working for you, I'm for it. I'm for anything that works. But um, although the Sumerian civilization collapsed thousands of years ago, they argue, arguably laid the seeds of human to grow flourish. And that's why I tell people that we're not dealing with flesh and blood. Forget that. I want to talk on this just a minute because here's, here's what's out there that concerns me. There are things in the conspiracy world which has now become uh, very extreme, you know? But there are things that are not totally wrong that they know. It is the attitude that they have with it and the way that they're using it by projecting it on people. So either they're project, we're projecting on Trump or the other side projected on Biden. So we talk about how godless Biden is and he's a communist and a socialist and, and some of us don't care for Trump and he's this and he's that and he's whatever. But it is we wrestle not against flesh and blood but powers and principalities in higher places. It's a consciousness that these people have tapped into because they've been told through their greed that they can become powerful and rich. And therefore they've joined these different little societies, if you want to call it that, and groups. And it's been going on for years and years that these secret societies have learned everything from reading the Bible differently because the religion, the Catholic Church did not want people to read the Bible at all. And finally, when it became where they had to do something, they wrote their own Bible to keep their dogma and their doctrine alive. King James is the same thing. King James was written by the Church of England, the king of the Church of England, because it had an agenda to keep the king of kings, the lord of lords, and the power went to the king away from the Pope. Yeah. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. So all these things had an agenda of some kind and, and, and we've lost. The real issue is a field of consciousness that's been left back up on this planet that when people plug into it, they get the power of that time and they become so-called illusionary powerful people. It's, it's a part of the illusion because as we said, there's only one true power and that's the power that God is. But they become powerful by the use of corporation, by the use of technology, whatever they do to have their, set the agenda for something uh, like, like, like that. So I keep telling people, if people would start getting more into the business of consciousness than in the business of trying to change people, people would change because people are consciousness. The body is consciousness made flesh. Everything is consciousness driven by energy. Energy is driving consciousness to always become, 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 become. So everything that becomes something the five senses can see is always an effect. And we're trying to, we're so busy trying to change the effect that we're not working with changing the cause. Are you with me? Yes. So Heartlight's business, when you must be about your father's business, 
you've got to say our business is consciousness. One, undoing the old incorrect stories that we have downloaded and we have to take responsibility for that. We are not victims completely. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm saying 100%, but I mean, maybe because of the, of the church you were raised in, the parents you were raised in, th there, there was a tendency toward forming how you thought in those first three chakra experiences. But in, 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 the, in the bottom line, you validated those beliefs and kept them in you they didn't put it in you. They offered it to you. They made you feel you should believe it, but you're the one who believed it. Yeah, so that's why you have to take the responsibility to change your own belief through, and you might remember this, self-knowledge. Gene Davis. I'm getting ready to get back on that a little bit. Gene Davis is teaching. It's called self-knowledge. Your true belief system has to come from your own self-knowledge. Last week when they had, they were interviewing uh, families of victims of uh, mass, you know. And this one person, this one woman said, they say that this is not who we are. You know, to shoot up people. They say, this is not who we are. She said, but this is who we are. And she went all the way back to when the country was founded and how they came in and, and took over the, the natives who were there and on up through bringing the Africans here. The white supremacy is who we have always been. And we still are, unfortunately. But on all the replays, the different stations, uh, they didn't mention that. No, but I have heard that myself. Really? <laughs> You're fooling yourself. This is exactly who we are, and we're and we're in a place where we're having to come to terms with who we, who we are, is who we became. It's not who we are, in the sense of our spiritual identity but it's who, who we became is who we are and we became racist and we became all these isms to prove this agenda of separation and I'm not you and I'm not uh, you know you're not me type of thing and that's why it is our responsibility to begin to be the observer of all of the beliefs that we have unconsciously uh, and unconsciously and that sort of the work has to be done a little bit deeper than just sitting here mentally and saying, okay, I'm not going to believe that anymore. That's not right. It's not right to be racial. I'm not going to be racial anymore. When you have the roots of racism that is deeply connected into those chakras, you've got to put the axe at the root of the tree. Yeah. Hmm? You've got to put the axe at the root of the tree. But what we need to be is not be a better fixed 3D human we need to transmute or transform or metamorphose into a new creation in Christ. Spiritual growth. Spiritual growth. Oh my God, yes. Yeah, I don't want to be an enlightened caterpillar. I want to be a completely rebuilt, rebuilt. I want my DNA rebuilt. And I want my DNA to rebuild my physical body, my mental body into a new creation, a new creation. Thank you for bringing that up. That is very important. Anybody else, since we kind of opened it up just a little bit, we can. This is quite a story, by the way. Uh, there's no way I could sit here and go through this whole story, but if you're interested, uh, there's no reason you can't. Yes, go ahead. I was going to say, and if you're interested in a, a dumbed-down version, there's a channel called spiritscience.net and spiritscience.org. They've got cartoons where they recreated these things into a cartoon form, and they kind of give you a, a lighter view of a lot of what they would say. It's, it's amazing. It's just amazing.
Uh, I really suggest you, you look at that. And there's about any subject we've talked about on there that you can see. But if you put it in an Anaki or something like that, you'll get this wonderful animated story of this whole thing. And it makes it fun to watch. It takes the heaviness out of it. Is it in Gaia, by any chance? No. No. Spirit, spirit science. Spirit science. Spirit science. Spirit science. Spirit science. Okay. Spirit science. Yeah, spirit science. Yeah, I really recommend that you, you do that. And then, because I'd love for, if, if you can do it this next week sometime, some other, then we can discuss it. Yeah. I think if I, if you had the story, then we can discuss the story with each other. Again, if you are not comfortable with this, if it is not resonating with you, tell them what we do. We, quant we quantify it and then we qualify it if we think it's right. First, we... Contemplate. Contemplate. <laughs> right. We do not judge it right or wrong. Good mm -hmm. or bad. But we hold it in the neutral, non judgment place of our consciousness. Because if we do that and it's a part of our innate intelligence, we will draw it up and you'll have your own self knowledge at that moment. And that will be your own aha, I get it. It's not David's stuff, it's my stuff. And that'll have your I am code on it. Right. See, every I am, when you incarnate, you get every lifetime, you get your own I am code. And that's how action, reaction, things find you because we're all the same I am, but you all have a unique code that nobody else has. So, I think we need to, next week, if we can, let's get to 5D. That's what we're trying to get to. 4D has been difficult, and it's, it is difficult. 4D is what you're living now. It is the complicated time of the overlap of breakdown and breakthrough, death and birth, old and new. It is, it is a very confusing time. Uh, it's a time of confusion. Con, con. what does con mean? Um, With. Fusion. So it's a time that you are fusing yourself to a new consciousness and leaving the old one behind and you're in a state of confusion. This is a good thing. Not easy. And I'm not here to tell you this is an easy time. This is a time that you must, must, must have your uh, roots very, very deep. I have just a few minutes here, and I'm going to read a little bit to you out of John 8. This is Jesus. If God were your father, you would love me. For I proceed forth and come from God, neither came I of myself, but he who sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear. This is what, this is what supposedly Jesus dealt with. There wasn't anybody much with a consciousness to hear what he really had to say. So he had to tell them stories and parables and water it down and just hope... Because he said, there will be a generation that will come along. He knew. He knew that you were going to show up 2,000 years later. He knew that we were going to be sitting here talking about the deeper things that he was trying to tell them in 2022. You are of your father, the devil. The word here is adversary. And the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and Yahweh was. I'm sorry, he was a murderer from the beginning. Abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaketh his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. Then the Jews said unto him, 
Say ye not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil? Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and ye do dishonor me. For I seek not my own glory. There is one that seeketh and judgeth. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. And the Jews said unto him, Now you know that thou art a devil. Abraham is dead and the prophets, and thou sayest, if a man keepeth my sayings, he shall never taste death. Thou art greater than our father Abraham, which is dead, and the prophets are dead. Whom makest thou, or you yourself? Jesus answered, if I honored myself, my honor is nothing. It is my father that honored me. And it goes down and says, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. I love it. I'm closing here with something really important. Hold on. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. He saw it. He saw it. He visualized it. Long before God incarnated and made manifest on the earth. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and thou hast seen Abraham? Are you kidding me? <laughs> now here's what I want to get to you that it really goes with what we've been doing, talking about on Sunday. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Before Abraham was, I am. That's what he was getting to. The truth. Jesus, who do you say? What is the truth? I am the truth. Ah, yay, yay. <laughs> Let us pray. Ah, Holy Spirit, we so thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for taking a very controversial and complex subject and doing our best to try to make it into a way that we can understand it to a level to resonate our innate intelligence. As we leave this class today, let us leave with our consciousness more expanded, more evolved, more open, more ready, ready for the inner teaching that is awakening in ourselves. We just want to take this time of gratitude to thank you for this space and that you've given us that we can come together and still enjoy the freedom to speak as we choose and feel. If there's anything that is being said that is not in alignment with divine intelligence, I ask you just let us forget it. Don't let it take seed. We won't qualify it but we seek only that which is true and that which resonates to help us to remember to wake up more and more and more to who we are and our mission. We are your Elohims. We are your sons of God, daughters of God. We are your expression individualized into a frequency of a planet called Gaia, Mother Earth. We are her children physically as we are your children spiritually. You are the father of my spirit and with the mother of my body. We come together and make beautiful babies together. Take a moment, take it in. Okay, when you're ready to open your eyes, I know you're probably ready just to go on out now. Thank you so much, what a great class you are. And if anybody's still with us online, thank you so much also. And thank you for your support. 
it is so important to keep this class going. I don't mind doing what I'm doing to prepare for it and to be available for it, but it's only due to the fact of your support for it. We don't put any charge on this class, but we believe you are mature enough. If you're coming to this class, you've got a certain maturity <laughs> and that you're mature enough to give, to give to the class each month so that we can uh, make the budget of the class. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. Michael back there, we love you. We send love and comfort to you at this time and to also all of those who are looking to us today. All right, have a great day, a great week. I'll see you Sunday morning.